Good evening, everybody. Can you all make sure your cell phones are on silent and please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Patty, would you read, read uh, take roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mayor Woods. Here, ma Vice Mayor Marino. Here. Vice Mayor Pro Tem Litt. Here. Council Member Marciano. Here. Council Member Reed. Here. We'll wait for Mark. <clears throat> Mark, you good? I'm good. Okay, good. All right, that's one way for it. All right, additions, deletions, modifications. Are there any additions, deletions, or anybody this evening? Chelsea, Mark, Rochelle, Maria? No, Mark, no. you good? Okay. I actually have one. I'd like to reorder the agenda to have um, items for council action and discussion move to, to following item six, city manager's report. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second? I'll, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next is announcement presentation. Uh, I'd like to call Wendy Satori, link to the podium, please. Hi, Wendy. Hello, Bobby. You can take that off if you I want. I wasn't sure what the protocol Yeah, is. we got lots of stuff. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> lots of stuff between me and you. So, well, thank you very much. I wanted to just come before you and, and see what I can answer for you, give you a little bit of an update on where we are with our elections. You know, we're, we're in it now. Vote by mail ballots have gone out. And I know we have a lot of your residents and, and citizens who are going to be concerned about voting. So I thought we could just spend a couple minutes giving you an update on what we're doing. So um, as I mentioned, vote by mail ballots have gone, you know, gone out, the initial drop. We've uh, had over 300,000 ballots have been mailed. Uh, we're continuing to get more. I think we had a request for 3,000 of them came in today. So we know we'll continue having more and more come out. Uh, those ballots, and we, have, we often have people ask us, well, are they only going to be counted if nothing, you know, if it's a close race? You know, do you save those until the end? And we wanted to let you know, and I know you all know, that of course not. You know, every ballot is going to be counted no matter what, but your vote by mail ballots are going to be in that early return. So when you get the very first returns right after seven, those include your vote by mail ballots that we've received up until Monday. Uh, through Monday night, as well as the early voting results. The ballots that we get in on Tuesday will be doing those, that processing throughout the day on Tuesday. So some of them may, in fact, be in the early results. Others will be later in the night as we continue to release results uh, periodically. But we did want to let people know that those are going to be your early results. And then if you choose to uh, do early voting, I'm sorry, if you choose to do vote by mail, a couple things to know is we do have postage prepaid. So that's new this year, and it makes it very accessible and very easy for voters to do that because they don't have to go figure out what the postage is and, and try to find stamps for it. And you can also drop your ballot off. If you don't want to drop it in the mailbox, you can drop it off at any one of our four offices. Uh, you can do at our main office until 7 o'clock on election night, and you can do our outer offices until 5 o'clock on election night. And then you can also take it to any one of the early voting sites during early voting hours. We have 18 early voting sites. And so you can go August 3rd through August 16th uh, will be early voting. And from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And during those hours, you can go. You don't have to stand in a line. There's a separate line uh, to just go and drop your vote by mail ballot in the, in the box. So you get a lot of different ways for people to do that. I said early voting is certainly an option we have on our website. If people want to look at what the wait times are for early voting, they can go pull it up and look to see what we have uh, for wait times, and they might decide to choose one over the other since we have 18 places to choose from. And the other thing you can do on our website, which is great, which is pbcelections.org, is it will show you in real time what the voter turnout is. So you can look at it by precinct, you can look at it by location, you can look at it a lot of different ways by party. So however you want to manipulate that data, you can see in real time it's updated every 15 minutes throughout the day. So since we had that ability with our new equipment, we wanted to share that with all of the voters as well. So that's something you can do. And then on election day, of course, you have to vote in your own precinct. 
and that's seven to seven. Uh, in terms of the COVID concerns that people have, you know, uh, people ask me, well, will there be lines? You know, it's a presidential election coming up in November. I can assure you, yes, there will be lines in November. August, we don't typically have as many lines, so we may not have, uh, have such a problem then. But you know, if, so that's why we do have the vote by mail as an opportunity. But if you do decide you want to vote in person, we want you to know we're making it as safe as we possibly can. So all of the poll workers who are going to be there will have their temperatures taken in the morning with disposable thermometers. Then uh, they'll also be filling out the health survey to make sure that there's no problems that we can know of. And then they'll all be having, all poll workers are required to wear masks. We're also providing them with those facial shields in addition if they choose to wear that. They will have gloves and uh, hand sanitizer as well as disinfecting wipes. Uh, we, for the voters, where all voters are going to be required to wear a mask because of the county executive orders, uh, but unless they have a health reason not to. But if the voter does not bring their own mask, we will have a mask for them. So nobody will be denied the right to vote because they didn't have a mask. So we'll have a mask for those who need it. We will also have pens. Uh, available that if they can be single-use pens, so a voter is absolutely able to bring their own pen, but if they'd like to use one of ours, it'll be a single-use pen. They can take it with them if they want. And uh, they, of course, will have hand sanitizer to, to wash their hands as they come in. If they want to use a glove because they choose to sign the EVID, they don't want to hold the stick or the, you know, the, the stylus, or if they are concerned about using their finger, we will have a glove for the voter as well to use. So we've tried to do everything we can to make a voter feel safe when they go there. Those uh, transparent shields that you see at a lot of the stores, we also have those. Those will be between the voters and the poll workers as well. So that with, of course, the social distancing, we'll have the tape in English and Spanish on the floor that says, you know, indicates every six feet. So with social distancing, if, if there are lines, it'll make them look longer, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna try to do that. So with that, we're hoping that voters will feel confident going to the polls. And we're hoping that we'll have our poll workers feeling confident because that, of course, is a big concern of ours, is losing poll workers. And as you know, people see numbers go up and they're concerned and they don't know exactly what we're doing to protect people, you know, we get a lot of calls and a lot of people saying that they don't want to be a poll worker now. So we are trying to let you know it is as safe as we can make it. And if you are inclined and you're not in that vulnerable category, we need you. So <laughs> completely imploring everybody to please consider being a poll worker. And um, we, you can do a pre-registered or registered voter. So if, even voters who are 16 and 17 pre-registered voters can vote. So a lot of we have some students who are looking for either some good pay or some community service hours. And reminder too that the poll workers are paid positions. They make for the election between $190 and $320 for the election, depending upon what position they have. So it's a, it's a good way to earn a little pocket money. and. Um, with that, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them for you. Could you just mention about the adopt a precinct for nonprofits? Because I know a lot of our nonprofits are hurting right now. So if there's that much money that they can Absolutely. get. Absolutely. So our adopt a precinct is another way that we're trying to be creative in how we can get new poll workers. So if there's an organization that has not taken a position on a candidate or an issue on the ballot, so that's the, the first thing they have to get passed, they can apply to be an adopt a precinct where that organization will come in and use their volunteers to, to staff the precinct. They'll go through the same poll worker training that all poll workers go through. They'll have the same requirements. Uh, not everybody can be from the same party. Depending upon which location it is, it may require a Spanish speaker. But we can provide those things if, if, if we need that. But then what will happen is the, adopt the, the, the group will be able to wear their shirts, promote themselves, and they will get the money that we would have paid the poll worker will now go to the organization. So it's a great way for people to use their volunteers who maybe aren't able to use them right now because there's not as many things they can do. This is a good way they can do that. Organization makes some money, shows their pride, they're letting people know who they are. We provide a sign that says this precinct has been adopted by this group, but they can also provide their own signage. And then the last thing about uh, voting in honor of a veteran, I think it's worth mentioning as well. I love that one. So yeah, so voting in honor of a veteran is a way that we're trying to, again, connect with our community. So everybody who is a veteran or an active service man or woman uh, is eligible to be on our wall of honor. We have a virtual wall of honor. It's a uh, screen a little bit smaller than that size, but a big screen in our office right when you walk in that is scrolling all the time that shows veterans. And a lot of the veterans will send us their picture 
when they were in uniform, as well as their current picture today. And then whatever information they choose to share about themselves, we have that information, and so we're able to do that. It's also on our website. And once we're able to go to schools again, one of the things we're going to do is take that information, the pictures of the veterans and information about them with us to the school. So when we're trying to encourage people to register or pre-register, we can remind them that this opportunity that they have came because of sacrifices of other people. And that this is somebody that will say, perhaps when you go vote, you'd like to vote in honor of a veteran and we'll give them the information about somebody. And then when they go to the polls, uh, instead of getting a regular I voted sticker, they can ask for a veteran sticker and it will say I voted in honor of a veteran with a place for you to put that person's name. So it's a, a way that we're trying to connect with the community and then also try to connect with our students as well. Very nice. Any other questions? Mark, Rochelle? I do. Nope, I'm good. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Maria? Wendy, how are we doing with precincts? Are we 100%? Oh, uh, with our locations? Yes. So we have had only one uh, governmental precinct or location had to close, and that's because it was being condemned up in Tequesta. So we have a new location to replace that. We have had 15 locations that are private locations, a couple of churches, and uh, we've had some churches, uh, some temples, and then mostly it's been the private clubhouses. So the residential clubhouses where Although on one hand, it's their own residents who would be voting there, and so it would be a great service for them, they've made the determination that they don't want to open it for voting. So we have had to, some of those we've been able to get some new school locations that are now available to us, so we've been able to replace them, and others we have divided them up, and you know, so we may have people going to different locations just so we can split them up to existing locations. And how are you notifying your voters on that? We are sending out new voter information cards and we'll also be putting an ad in the newspaper. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I have no questions, Wendy. Okay. And thank well, you very thank much. Thank you very Good job, much, Wendy. appreciate it. Good yeah. job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Carl, Carl, before you go on, I'm having a hard time hearing Maria and Chelsea. I heard Wendy very well. We'll just talk Sorry. louder. How's that There work? you go, thank you. Is that you. better? Chelsea? Hello. You good? Thank you. Better. Better. Okay, next is comments from the publics, and I do not have any comment cards for items that are not on the agenda. So we will move to the city manager report. Ron, do you have a report? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor and Council, I have three items for your information. As you know, uh, just about every day I'm sending updates on uh, our COVID-19 situation and re run reports. Uh, I asked Fire Rescue uh, to advance their Friday uh, report to Thursday and they, they dug in real deep and uh, uh, got the hospital situation reports a day early for you. Just got it uh, uh, this afternoon. At the Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center, they currently have 35 COVID-19 uh, cases. They have 53 beds available and six in ICU beds and accumulation, they've had four deaths. The Jupiter Medical Center currently has 30 COVID-19 cases. Uh, they ha there are 68 beds available and 10 ICU beds available. They have reported to date 23 deaths. Uh, the ALF and nursing homes in the city, we have nine of the total of 1,449 uh, residents Currently, there are 26 COVID-19 patients uh, in and about those homes. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that you up to date today about tomorrow's report. We're able to get it. And I appreciate Fire Rescue uh, getting that information early. I know a lot of you like to have that information so you can disseminate it to the residents. So we'll be passing that along to you. And yesterday they had uh, I think it was zero as far as the runs reports are concerned. Uh, so that varies from day to day, as you well know. Uh, the second thing that I would like to bring to your attention is I'd like to call Charlotte Prezinski, our Recreation Leisure Services Director, uh, to the, uh, dot, the uh, podium to give you a very brief presentation of a special event for all of us. Yes. And to my fellow parks and recreation professional where Ron started his career, thank you for uh, allowing me this evening to share something with you. For the record, Charlotte Przenski, Leisure Services Administrator. 
Um, every July, the National Recreation and Park Association celebrates Parks and Recreation Month. We have a video that we're going to show you this evening that celebrates the work of your staff. You're going to see the motto this year chosen by that National Association is We Are Parks and Recreation. They chose that specifically because the people in my field have been challenged, as everyone has, with the situation we're in and being called on to do different things in our community. Just like your staff has with food drives and resident relief funds, people all across the country have called on their parks and rec team to do those things. Um, there are words in the video that you're gonna see that describe the heart and soul of the people that are in my profession. Uh, this video was put together actually more of an internal thing that we were going to share with our staff tomorrow so they could take pause to celebrate the things they do for the gardens community. Thank you to Mr. Ferris for allowing me to share it tonight. Um, before we go on, Eric, I do want to say that there are, with, there are so many departments that help us, and we could not do what we do for this community without community services, uh, engineering department, police, fire, finance, the clerk's office, HR, planning and zoning, and thank God for IT. Um, without them, we can't do what we do, and we're always in front of the camera, per se, and they're behind the scenes supporting us. So I want to thank them also. They're a key part to what we do for our community. But just want to share with you that video. It's about a minute <coughs> and a half, and uh, Eric's got it. Thank you for letting me share that. Thank you, Charlotte. I know that you all feel the same way I do about our Parks and Recreation staff. And congratulations uh, on Parks and Recreation Month and your commitment to this city. Um, Can we have a, sh a copy of that video? Of course. OK. It'll be our pleasure. Thank you. Um, also, at this time, I uh, would like to call uh, to, here, let me find my paper. Uh, call to the podium our public uh, media and relations manager, Candace Temple, and public uh, media relations specialist, uh, Madeline Marconi. Would you please come to the podium? Camera in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. 
Mr. Mayor. Guys, on behalf of myself and the Vice Mayor, I want to uh, appreciate you two for going above and beyond helping us on the state of the city. And we have, we have a little writing and we have a commendation for your file. And I would like to read the commendation as we wrote it down. So it's in with deep appreciation that we write this commendation to both of you in recognition of your outstanding effort and professional conduct. You went above and beyond the call of duty on a project that never before attempted in the city of Palm Beach Gardens. Your video production of the 2020 State of the City was a huge success, largely due to your vigilance and determination. Needless to say that it was a challenge for both of us, but you were great coaches and innovators. As mayor and vice mayor of the city of Palm Beach Gardens, we commend you both on a job well done. And we had a lot of fun, and it took <laughs> two weeks just to get through the video part of it. But uh, for well, you guys that don't fits, know, we did it. Some fits and starts. Yeah, we did it right here in this room, and it was a mess. With no power. Yeah. <laughs> but as we got warmed up and the camera challenges, and you know, once the community, and I believe the, the, the corridor and the chamber, I think, I think we kind of nailed it. Um, so char are largely in part of you. So anyway, I have a couple of these for you guys, for your oh. wall. While they're coming down, or either one of you or both of you have anything to say? Uh, I know the communications department always has something to say. <laughs> uh, just thank you. Um, very, very thoughtful, obviously unexpected. Um, Madeline and I uh, have been working as a team for about a, a little over a year now, and um, Everything we do here is about teamwork. We certainly were just the facilitators of a great staff, um, awesome subject matter experts. Um, so I will just say thank you for trusting us and, um, and, and letting us have fun with it. We enjoyed it and it was a challenge, but in every challenge there is growth. So thank you. went well. Ron? That's all I have. Okay. Well, so since we've moved um, items for council action and discussion, we're going to move into that now. And I have two topics to bring up. And the first one I'm a little bit nervous to read, so I wrote it down because it's a lot. But uh, I'm going to try and get through it. It's a positive thing. So I have a topic that I would like to discuss with my fellow council members, and my comments have a lot of detail, so please forgive me for reading them. I just don't want to leave anything out, so, I won't, so if you will indulge me, I'll appreciate it. You, may, you all may or may not realize, but this year Ron will celebrate his 20th year as city manager of the city of Palm Beach Gardens. I'm sure that all of you share my hope that he will remain our city manager for many, many years more to come. In light of this very significant milestone, I had an idea. 
I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, Carl's got an idea. I see Mark's face over there. He's kind of got blank on him. But trust, you guys will go with me. I know you trust me, so um, it's a good thing. Rather than waiting until Ron retires one day, with our city hall renovation nearing completion, I feel that this is the perfect time for the council to consider naming our newly renovated city hall the Ronald M. Ferris Municipal Complex. If I was you, I'd be thinking, why are you bringing this up now? And why am I just hearing about it? And why are you bringing it up? Well, to answer the first question, it's that normally the naming of the city facility is handled by the city manager and his staff. However, we all know that Ron would never even consider naming this newly renovated city hall after himself. The second question, I wanted to share this with my fellow council members about my idea but due to the sunshine law, I could not discuss this with any of you outside a public meeting. So if this was to be a surprise to Ron, it also had to be a surprise to you. It is important to me that you all know that I do not see this as my idea. I brought it up because I honestly believe that my fellow council members would feel the same way about Ron and our city as I do. This is a council decision and action as it should be. Recognition of Ron's sustained contrib contributions to our city should absolutely come from the five of us as a team and more importantly as a family. So why do I think it's appropriate to name our city hall complex after Ron? Here are just a few data points for you to consider. When Ron first arrived in the city as interim city manager, I was just a young snot-nosed cop and the city was not in the best of shape. It was struggling fiscally. There was no long-term vision. Employee morale and productivity was non-existent. The facilities were poor condition. There was little inventory in terms of parks and fields for our families and children. Our golf course was fiscally a mess to say the least. And our total, and our total financial reserve was only $700,000. Our city was literally one bad decision away from bankruptcy. Back then, Palm Beach Gardens was largely a bedroom community that, with the exception of the Gardens Mall, had very little commercial and virtually no corporate headquarters. Ron had his work cut out for him, and I'm sure he knew it. During his 20 years, Ron has, super, has spearheaded the transformation of our city into the thriving community that we all love and enjoy today. And may I remind you, the number one city in the state of Florida. While to name every highlight and accomplishment would take several hours, I had staff compile a short list of career highlights, accomplishments, projects, fiscal savings that can be attributed to Ron's leadership. I'm going to start right here. Ron has been in government servant. Ron has been a government servant for over 45 years, a city manager for the last 33. Ron became city manager of Palm Beach Gardens in 2000 and has had 17 council members for his bosses since then. Process improvements and programs. Ron brought engineering in-house, saving over $12 million in 10 years. He took the city attorney's position from a city employee to an outside firm, saving over $3 million in over 12 years. Self-insurance health fund, saving over $16 million since 2008. Ron created our over and over award-winning purchase department, and I'm sure Kumra is somehow getting an award tonight for something. <laughs> Ron instituted the hurricane preparedness program after Hurricane Francis and Jean hit only two weeks apart. He created media relations department that made us shine this night. He started economic development initiatives to, div to diversify our tax base. As we still do today, Ron sought out targeted industries in order to maintain a high level of service while maintaining a low tax rate. Back then, new money was needed to infuse into our gardens economy, like, like Chromali, TBC, and more recent UTC known as the Carrier and the FPL project that's going on today. I was the very first cop that drove over the PGA bridge when it was, uh, when it was finalized many, many years ago. And with the PGA flyover enhancements, without the lighting features that shine brightly every night, and now in concert with the Twin Towers, that bridge would be just simply a bridge. Northcom Regional 911 Dispatch Center now includes six municipalities, model for other agencies to follow. 
We are the only city in the county that provides regional dispatch for its neighbors. Here's one I, didn't, I thought was funny. Paperless and digital agenda process saved over 1.1 million since its implementation. Our fire department is dual credit. It's the only one in Palm Beach County. Public and private partnerships like Cressy Sports and Palm Beach North Athletic Foundation. I'm a big fan as well as Eric Jablin, the art and public places and gardens art programs to support our culture in the community. As you all know, the recent COVID-19 response programs, Economic Recovery Act currently in phase three. Here's some fiscal savings and initiatives. In September 2000, the city had less than $700,000 in its reserve. We now brag about it and we have now over 27 million in our reserves. The city's bond rating has been AAA since 2011. Just a few years ago, the one cent sales tax revenue bond, building for tomorrow using today's dollar, and look around our city and see what we've done in the last few years. He fought to receive two million from FEMA when we were originally denied reimbursement. Ron stabilized the millage so that long range financial forecasting was possible and predictable. He reduced the debt service millage to zero Our facilities and enhancements that you see as you came in tonight, our emergency operations center right outside that, right outside that door is category five. Our new operations center, which is the one down by the by east of the parks, also category five and will protect our city's fleet and other equipment and investments. You see our city hall renovation, our tennis renovation, new clubhouse and courts, multiple awards, our golf course renovation and construction of the new clubhouse, also category five. EMS lab, public safety training on Richard Road for canine, police tactical training, state-of-the-art use of force, also category five. Riverside Youth Enrichment Center, Apple, Apple accredited child care facility, peace of mind for the employees and the community. Our veterans plaza right outside. Ron is a proud veteran like many of us. The Gardens North District Park, four fire stations, two, three, four, and five. There was only one when I got here increased our park inventory by 38% since 2010, not to mention Scripps, Honda Classic, Operation Sister City, and so on. Let me touch on, on Ron's morale and leadership. Ron has a high employee retention of 17 years, average for department head, 11 years for other employees. Staff wants to work here and for Ron. Exceptional leaders like Ron excel at visualizing the future and seeing the bigger picture. They are confident without being arrogant or optimistic and are optimistic. They are able to make decisions setting clear goals necessary to achieve their vision for the future. They innovate and are not afraid to push boundaries like we are pushing forward with mobility. Ron is the man behind the curtain that makes this city vision reality. It's no accident that year after year, virtually every city department, especially Kumra, has won numerous awards and accolades. Here are some phrases that his staff feels describes him best. Ron is courageous, tenacious, ethical, innovated, service oriented, fiscally responsible, prepared, he's a leader, and finally a friend. He is not only my friend, but he's all of ours, everybody in this room and everybody view viewing this evening. So in closing, through Ron's knowledge and experience, which translates into wisdom, Ron exemplifies the definition of a leader, one who motivates a group of people to achieve a common goal. It is Ron's inspiring leadership and relentless pursuit of perfection that has allowed our team and this city to achieve greatness. And I thank you for a moment of your time. I do have comments um, from supporters, and at this time I'd like to invite a few community leaders to offer their comments. I've asked them to speak on this topic because it's important for the council and the public to know that we're not only alone, we're not only the only people who support this idea. First, I would like to invite Mr. Steve Matheson to the podium, please. And then Tom Carnes, and then Noel, and then Tony. Thank you, Mayor Woods. I'll be brief. And I wanna tell you, of all the times that I've appeared before this council, this is probably the one that's given me the most pleasure. Um, I have been 
I have been appearing before the City of Palm Beach Gardens Planning Board and City Council for approximately 37 years, about the same time as Mr. Carnes and I were asking the city to believe in the Gardens Mall. And then we built it with the city's support. Through all that time, I have persevered at times and sometimes enjoyed working with city administration. I think probably five administrations before Mr. Ferris became our city manager. What an incredible difference and what a gift we were given. Since he started, since he began building the team that he has, our city has shown itself in the best possible light to our residents, to our businesses, to our competitors as other cities seeking um, business or other, um, other economic activity. And we've done so because of leadership. And that leadership was not an accident. That leadership was determination. That leadership was fearlessness in the face of adversity. And the word I love to use, and I'm gonna use it tonight, is that leadership was the leadership of a warrior. A warrior who fought for the city of Palm Beach Gardens and continues to do so every day. We've been at this together 20 plus years, and I got to tell you, we've been shoulder to shoulder, and we've been shoulder against shoulder. But in all of those issues, we have worked, and Ron has made sure that we have ended up with a better result, with something that made us proud to be the city of Palm Beach Gardens. And I got to tell you, our firm works from Jacksonville to Miami. We work from West Palm Beach to Naples. There is nothing that compares to the leadership, to the camaraderie, and to the loyalty that the city of Palm Beach Gardens is because of you. That is because of you over all these years, building consensus and getting through tough times. And let's face it, we have had some very tough times. We've been in the media, and I've been in this audience when people who who had a real issue with the city, ended up uh, hugging Chief Step, hugging Mr. Ferris, which can be tough sometimes, if you know what I mean. But it, we did that because he was willing to step forward and to be honest and to open up and give of himself to do the right thing. And guys, I'm so pleased we're recognizing this now instead of later uh, when he's retired and, and farting around on the golf course with me, with me hopefully. Uh, just a couple quick things. Number one, fiscal management. Number two, bond rating. Number three, employee health care services. Number four, employee retention. Natalie, we started at the same time, right? Okay. These are things that are intangible but that make for continuity and continuity and stability is what brings business to the city of Palm Beach Gardens. It what, it's what makes the city of Palm Beach Gardens special. I can bring someone into this city hall and we know that they're going to be treated fairly, they're gonna be treated toughly, but the end result is going to be the best result. And we owe that in large part to you, Mr. Ferris, and I can't tell you how much it means every day. That's all I have to say. I urge you to pass this resolution tonight. Thank you, Steve. Tom Carnes. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, I don't know what that's all about. I was told this is going to be a roast. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I was going to roast him a little bit, but I didn't know it would go over very well. You guys are too much. I did, I did write some notes, and now you guys, you, 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 between the two of you, you said everything. Sorry. I mean, I'm, listen. Feel free to use it. I, I'm, honored, I'm honored to the opportunity to be here and uh, speak before the, uh, the council. And to see, I haven't been down here in a few months, to see how the complex is coming together. It looks beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I know everyone's working hard on that. 
and this is, you know, with that, with that coming up to get a CO, I would guess in, looks like a month or two, if your office is, isn't too elaborate. <laughs> Twenty years. I've been here for, th as Steve said, a long time. Uh, the first time I came up before the council was was 35 years ago, uh, presenting the uh, the Gardens Mall, and uh, we've been through a lot of city managers, and uh, none as good as uh, as Ron Ferris. He has really strong leadership abilities, and he recognizes uh, the ability that people have, and he promotes from within where he can, and he hires from without. But he knows who he's hiring. He, he screens the people. And, uh, you know, the presentations, usually when I'm up here, I'm, I'm complimenting one of the departments for winning another national or state presentation or something. But, I mean, if you look at Charlotte's presentation tonight, it's terrific. I mean, it's first class. And you, if you looked at that, the people in there, they're all smiling. They're all happy. They all want to stay. Everybody likes working in the gardens. And Ron, and that's, that is due in no small part to, to Ron. He, uh, he teaches people, he teaches them honesty and integrity. He motivates them to do their best to achieve the goals that you, the council, set for him, hand off to him, and say, this is what we'd like you to look at, or this is what we'd like you to do. So, Ron, I've told you before from up here, you're the best. I know you get some a lot of help from uh, from the staff, and they're they're terrific too. But uh, congratulations, and I encourage you to uh, go forward with uh, naming the uh, the complex after Ron. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Noel. Hi, Noel. Hello. How are you? Great. How are you? Good evening, Good. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. It's great to be here. Um, I've been very, very fortunate to work with many leaders all over the county in my role with the chamber, and very few have had the impact that Mr. Ferris has had on the community. Mr. Ferris's strong leadership qualities and what he stands for influences those around him. He's been successful in forming teams and challenging the status quo. Ron is, well, is a well-respected, public-facing leader, and all the hard-working city employees are an example of that. The city continues to provide award-winning programs year after year by virtually every city department. Mr. Ferris's visionary thoughts have turned into reality. Under his leadership, the city's provided economic incentives for attracting and maintaining high-quality businesses, and he's been visionary in creating public-private partnerships. A great example of that is the Small Business Relief Fund, a partnership with the PGA Corridor Association in the Chamber that has given a million dollars back to the small businesses that needed it most during this pandemic. Mr. Ferris is a communicator of strong beliefs and he's not afraid to stand up for what is right. He's direct and unfiltered, which has given Ron the ability. We know to that. <laughs> we know that. Whoa. Which has given Ron the ability to complete challenging tasks successfully. In preparing for this, I came across a quote that reminded me of Mr. Ferris. It goes like this. So leadership is the capability to influence others through inspiration, motivated by passion, generated by vision, produced by a conviction, and ignited by a purpose. Miles Monroe. This quote embodies Mr. Ferris's leadership style and who he is as a person. It would be an honor to have the City Hall Municipal Complex named after a leader like him. We do not have to wait for someone to retire to honor their accomplishments. Now is the time to show Mr. Ferris how much we appreciate all he has done for the city over the past 20 years. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. Tony, how are you? Good, man. Tony Bedalla, president of PBGYA. Everything I'm about to say, I know will be the same sentiment as the executive board that I represent, uh, the 5,000 families and the 800 volunteers. Around 14 years ago, I moved to Palm Beach Gardens. And when I moved here, I said, what a beautiful, beautiful city. What a, it, it, was, it was the most amazing uh, thing that I've seen driving down PGA. 
Then 12 years ago, I got involved with the PPGYA. And looking at the people that were involved with the city and working with your staff and the people with the recreation department and so forth, I said, who's behind this? You know, there's gotta be a strong guy behind this because it's so well organized. Everything that they did was professional from Jack to Daniel to Charlotte to everybody, Kumra. And I said, man, who's the guy behind this? Then I met you and I fell in love with you. I fell in love with the fact how honest you are, how direct you are, how direct you are as far as an answer goes. You know, you ask you something, you got a straight answer. It wasn't something like when I went to some of these other cities uh, in, my, in my business world where you got an answer and then maybe that was the answer, maybe that was the final result. Uh, well, when we started the process of building these fields, you have city council, you have the staff members, but you were the guy behind it. You were the backbone that guided everybody. And I recognized, I said, man, he sits in that office up there and he knows the direction. It's almost like you knew the future of everything. And my kids that I represent get to play in the most beautiful fields, the most beautiful complexes, with the most beautiful staff, with the most beautiful workers that you have working there. And that's all because of testimony to you. And that's what you developed over the 20 years. You know, it's a pleasure. I always said, I'll retire when you retire. And I mean that. And I mean that. And, you know, to have your name on that building now so I could tell those kids when they say, who's Ron Ferris? And I'll still be around. I'll, I won't be retired either. I, like I said, I retire when you retire. It'll be my pleasure to tell them everything I know about you. Ron, guys, I hope you approve this tonight. It will be uh, a testimony to a great man and someone who's been the backbone here for 20 years. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. I asked the city attorney to draft resolution 49-2020, which names the city hall the Ronald M. Ferris Municipal Complex. At this time, I would like the city attorney to hand out copies of the resolution, and we will place it up on the screen so that Mark and Rochelle can see it. Thank you, sir. We reading this? Because the mayor cannot make a motion um, at this time. Oh, hold on. Nope. I'm going to pass the gavel in order to make a motion. So, Maria, would you please take the gavel? Thank you very much. Um, I make a motion to add resolution 49 2020 to the agenda at this place on the agenda. I second that motion. We have a motion, a second, and a, and a, a, a discussion. We, we have a motion and a second. So may I call the question? We're not having discussion? Not on this part. I mean, you can have discussion on this, but you're just adding the resolution. To the okay, board. so in adding the resolution, we've got, we've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. To add the Aye. resolution, then open to it. To add the resolution, right. correct. Now just Aye. Section. Okay, now. Can, I, can you, uh, before you continue, can you roll up a little bit so I can see the second half? I just see the first sentence there. All right, so. So now I'm gonna make a motion to approve resolution 49-2020. If okay, Chelsea, I'd like to second. Uh, Ron, I can't see you, you're off to the corner. Can you come into the middle of your screen? There you are. We, we um, need a second to the motion. Carl, nice, nice idea, great okay, idea. Great. Ron, you and I have had a number of meetings. I think um, some of the conversations we've had have been direct but always honest and straightforward. I can't think of a better person to name the city hall. I know you're probably not really wanting your name on a building. You're pretty humble when it comes to uh, getting some of the, uh, the spotlight, but, um, but this is well-deserved. This is your city. You've done great things. It doesn't mean I'm gonna be any easier on you. And I don't think any of us are gonna not uh, 
not to ask the questions that need to be asked, but you've deserved it. You're a great leader for this city, honored to be a part of it. And I, um, I hope that you'll be okay with us passing this and putting your name on the building. So we have a motion and a second. Can we actually read the resolution into the record? Okay, thank you. Resolution 49, 2020, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, honoring Ar Ronald M. Ferris for 20 years of dedicated service to the City of Palm Beach Gardens as a city manager by naming and dedicating City Hall the Ronald M. Ferris Municipal Complex and commending him for his unselfish commitment to municipal leadership, governance, and exemplary public service, providing an effective date for other purposes. Thank you, Patty. Um, ironic that we had Ron's agenda, I mean, um, performance review last month, and I still have all the paperwork I had with me that month, and Ron, I'm gonna share a story that, I don't know if anyone else has heard this story, but I'll share it anyway. And if you have, just indulge me. A couple years ago, we were doing a presentation for the chamber, and we were doing a dry run in the EOC, and I did my part of the presentation, and uh, Steve Stepp did another part of the presentation, and we had one more gentleman from the city do a presentation, and it was really dry. And so Ron gets up in front of us all, and he goes, well, what did you think? And I went, it was really dry. And then Ron proceeded to motivate and cheer on staff better than any college coach I've ever heard, better than any preacher I've ever heard. <laughs> and I went home and I said to my mom, this man, <laughs> he's the heart and soul here, and he, it doesn't, it, the word is not allow. The word is he, he asks his staff to be better. He asks his staff to think outside of the box. He, he, the staff has the opportunity to really prove that they are, a, we're all a family and that the city is so important to them and they want to make the city better. And all of this happens because you have somebody at the top that has a vision and Ron, you have that vision. I mean, it's the same where you, you've now, you know, you're doing our budget for a 10 year forecast instead of five. And for all of you, all of you that can't see Ron's face, he's probably boiling under his skin. Um, he's got a little tiny smirk on his face. But this is a, to say well earned is an understatement. Uh, around the county, Ron is known as one of the best city managers that we have. And the better part of that is he mentors other city managers and whenever I'm out, that's what I hear is how, how well respected, how well regarded Ron is. And Maria, don't let anything happen to Ron because we'll take him if you don't want him. And it's like, no, that's not gonna happen. We will have, as long as Ron wants to be here and as long as we have the staff that we have and everybody works in concert the way they do, we have a phenomenal police department, a phenomenal fire department. We have an award-winning procurement department and we have an award-winning accounting department and we have an award-winning uh, leisure services. I mean, the, the, if you could see the wall of awards that we have here, why do you think that happens? That happens because you have good leadership. And Ron, I could go on and on, and you're giving me the, he's giving me that glance, you know? So with that, I'm gonna invite any of our other council members to say something. Chelsea. Oh, you oh, no, but you're right here. You I'm go right, and then I'll call Rochelle. I'm right and then here. I'll call Mark. I am the new guy, but I'll tell you what, the moment that I won my election back in March, the calls from council were all about, wait till you work with Ron because you're about to get mentored like you've never been mentored before and learn things you never could imagine and so far so good. But I'll, I'm also a lot like Ron and there's not a lot of baloney and not a lot of words. We just get the business done and I admire that about you so much. Again, the direct, um, kind words always are appreciated. So thank you for all of your leadership and for uh, helping me these last few months, which I know have been crazy and you've still taken so much time for me. Thank you. Rochelle? Oh, we all know that that Ron, you know, you don't like the spotlight. I, I'm sure. Well, this has been um, wonderful. At, at the same time, you're 
like Maria said, ha having to deal with being out there. Um, but one word kept coming up over and over again, and that's vision. And as Carl said, not only do you make our city vision a reality, but you do drive that vision. And um, it's kind of amazing when you hear the whole host of things that have happened over the past 20 years because of that vision. And I'm honored to be a part of it, uh, to be part of, of Ron's team. And um, there is no I in team and, and, and Ron subscribes to that wholeheartedly. But I hope your heart's full tonight with the respect and admiration of us all. And uh, I, I'm glad Carl brought this up. I think this is a, a, a great way to honor you. Mark, you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, I, I'm just, um, you know, when you when you look around at the team that, that's put together, that doesn't happen by accident. Uh, the staff, uh, his staff, uh, the people that work under his staff, the whole hierarchy from top to bottom, that's how a good organization is run. Uh, I try to learn from that and try to bring that to my little business as well. So I do learn from how his team is put together, and I think it's uh, why the city is what it is. And everywhere you go, people say, oh, Palm Beach Gardens, what a great place to be. So, uh, no, nope, I think it's great. And I think, uh, I hope that you'll be okay with us putting his name on the wall. And um, when he walks by every day with his coffee, you can look at it and smile. Carl, do you have anything to add? Or are we going to call the question? Well, I feel the heat's off of me now because now all of you got to share in on it. So, uh, Vice Mayor, I'd like to call the question. All right. So... All those in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you, Carl. Ron? Can we? Ron, I'm going to stand and clap. Sorry. Anything you want to say, Ron? It, you don't oh, get there's a vote. plenty I want to you say. Don't get a vote. Um, first, I don't believe Carl, you're ever able to keep a secret, but I guess you showed me. <laughs> I'm from that building. But you showed me, um, and uh, I don't believe that uh, staff was able to keep this from me either. And there'll be a special meeting tomorrow morning. <laughs> 8.30, I'll see you all there. Um, I'm embarrassed, you know, I, I, this is not my thing. I'm embarrassed, I'm honored, um, humbled. Uh, the words, I'm just searching for words to tell you uh, I was not expecting anything like this tonight. I was hoping to go home early, but <laughs> it's uh, very kind of you. Uh, for uh, bringing this honor to me I, uh, for maybe once in my life, a little bit short of what, knowing what to say. I appreciate the, the kind accolades, um, but as always, I will tell you this. I'm only as good as the sum part of the totals of those people in the audience and those that aren't here tonight that put together the team and as always, it's always the council, too, that gives the direction and helps pull this together. Without the council and without uh, those men and women out there that have the same aspirations that I do and share the vision that I share with them, and they're the ones that are in the field, they're the boots on the ground, and they make me look good, uh, I wish I could take credit for all the things that you um, pointed out, but it's the men and women that are a part of this staff in this city that you should really be proud of and you should be naming it after them because they do it on a day-to-day -day basis out there and, and uh, they know I love them all. And uh, I'm just very proud of them. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I don't know what to say, but I'll get even, Carl, somewhere along the line. Hey, Ron, your wife even knows. 
<laughs> oh, that was that was great. That was, that was great. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, there isn't a damn thing I can do about that. Carl. <laughs> so much for keeping secrets. <laughs> yeah, I don't possess the same position of authority there that I do here. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I, I really don't know what to say. I'm just overwhelmed and I have a, a shortage of words other than but by the help and cooperation and collaboration with council and all those great men and women out there. Uh, it's fun. We have a lot of fun doing what we do and the challenges that we face and we've had many of them. We're still in one today. It's just amazing how this group comes together and we all pitch in and we get things done. And they'll be the first ones to tell you, like they do every time they're up in front of this group, they will tell you about how the family and the team got together and helped each other accomplish the missions. And as long as we're able to do that, and as long as we're able to get things done, I love this city. I love these residents. I love the staff and the council. And it's, it's just like a dream come true for the last 20 years with a couple of nightmares, but mostly like a dream come true. Uh, but uh, I'm living the life and I'm enjoying it. And uh, I can't thank you all enough for this honor. And it was very kind of you uh, to come up here, Tony. I'll turn your back. I'm going to be getting you now on this one. Just kidding. Tony, thank you very much. Uh, everyone else, uh, Tom, Steve, you guys, uh, Noel, appreciate the kind words. Um, and I guess that's, I better stop while I, before I say something I shouldn't, I guess. Or maybe I already have, I don't know. But thank you all very much. I'm honored. Thank you. Well, you're having a building named after you, and that's awesome. So, Natalie, I know you were nervous about this, but you know the budget's approved now, so work your magic. Um, Holy heavens, we have a meeting to run. We also would like to, the council doesn't need to be involved on, on how you go about the business. I would like to make this fun. So, obviously, I would like Ron to be involved in the creativity of this, because you know we probably want to. It would be nice for, for you guys to share with council ideas and I don't want council to get involved in what size bolts we're going to use what script we're going to use just I'd like to be a, I would like the council to be a part of it as we move through this I know we have some ideas that he doesn't know but that was my final thought on it so do what you do all right I'm glad that's done Whew. wow I was stressed um, we have the consent agenda let me get back on thought I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Yeah, quasi. Okay, hold on. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you for everybody stopping by. Okay, you already left. Next, we have public hearings. I am required to read the quasi-judicial. Tonight we are holding quasi-judicial hearings on the following cases. Ordinance 6, 2020, request to rezone and establish PUD with a major conditional use approval. Resolution 34, 2020, request to rezone and establish PUD with a major conditional use approval. Res Resolution 40, 2020, Avenir Master Signage Program. Resolution 44, 2020, a site plan amendment to residence pod five, site plan number two. This means that all city council is required by law to base its decision on the evidence contained in the record of this proceeding, which consists of the testimony at the hearing, the materials which are an official city on file of this application and may, and any documents presented during this hearing. The council is also required by law to allow cross-examination of any witness who testifies tonight, cross-examination may occur after the staff and applicant and other participants have made their presentations and will be permitted in the order of the witness's appearance. 
It is necessary that anyone who testifies at the hearing remain until the conclusion of the hearing in order to establish to respond to any questions. If you plan to testify this evening or wish to offer any written comments, please fill out the comment card and give it to the city clerk to my left. The city clerk will now swear in all persons who intend on offering testimony this evening on any of these cases. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. I do. Patty, would you please read the title? Ordinance 5, 2020, an ordinance to the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, amending Chapter 78, Land Development, at Section 78-226, North Lake Boulevard Overlay Zoning District, NBOZ. Zoning regulations. B, land use chart in order to add self-service storage use to the list of conditional uses in the land use chart, providing that each and every other section and subsection of Chapter 78 land development shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date and for other purposes. I'm gonna open the public hearing. Has anything changed since the first reading? No, sir. There have been no changes since first reading. Ordinance five and six were combined presentation at, at first reading. Do we need another presentation by anybody, you guys? No. No, Rochelle, you guys I'm are good? good? I'm good. No, thank you. Okay. Um, I don't have any cards on this, so I want to close the hearing. Can I get a motion and second to approve, please? I'll make a motion. We approve. Okay. Bring it back for discussion. Anything, guys? No discussion. discussion. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. And just for the record, says the mayor already said, since uh, the presentations for Ordinance 5 and 6 were combined, we, they are considered combined for this as well. Ordinance 6, 2020. Um, Patty, would you please read the title? Ordinance 6, 2020. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, rezoning certain real property within the corporate limits of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, consisting of one parcel totaling 1.66, excuse me, 1.66 acres in size, located on the northeast intersection of Interstate 95 and North Lake Boulevard, to be known as the Garden Self Storage Plan Unit Development (PUD), providing that this parcel of real property is more particularly described herein shall be assigned the city zoning designation of plan unit development, PUD, overlay with an underlying zoning designation of general commercial CG1, providing that the zoning map of the city of Palm Beach Gardens be amended accordingly, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date for the purposes. Resolution 34, 2020 is a companion item to Ordinance 6, 2020, and will require council action. Resolution 34, 2020. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, granting site plan and major conditional use approval for a 74,936 square foot self storage facility with the 1,129 square foot accessory office within the Garden Self Storage Plan Unit Development PUD. The subject site is approximately 1.66 acres, more or less, located on the northeast intersection, intersection of Interstate 95 and North Lake Boulevard, is more particularly described herein providing conditions of approval, providing waivers, providing an effective date for other purposes. I'm gonna open the public hearing. Um, uh, any ex partes on this? I guess I'll start. I haven't spoken to anybody any different than I did the first on the first reading. So, no. Mark? No, nobody? No. no. Okay. You. As mentioned above, ordinance five and six were combined at presentation number one. Anyone wishing to speak on this item? All right. Um, nope. No cards. Close the hearing. Can I get a motion and second to approve? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All right. Bring it back for discussion. Any discussion, guys? Nope. I think the only discussion we already had, just yeah. that it's the best, best bet for that parcel, and, yeah, and yeah. we're glad they're coming in. I drove by there the other day. It, it really needs some love, so I'm, I'm glad it's going to look better. And your, Chelsea, your comments nailed it on the first reading. I mean, that Thanks. fits perfect right there, and it kind of set the tone. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, Rochelle, how are you? You good? Any comments on this particular issue? No, I'm good. As I said last time, it's the, the right project at the, at the right time. Uh, 
for for that spot and um, the fact that anything else that goes in on that strip would come before us again we can always deal with that at that time so um, I think it's a beautiful building and it's definitely gonna look the the, the factor uh, on that street so Very I'm well. good All right, mark you good no comments all right, hearing for no further discussion on this. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Clerk Aye. has already read the title on resolution 34, so I'm going to open hearing on that. Um, ex partes are the same, I'm assuming. No? Okay. I hear it. Okay. None. Um, no one wishing to speak. I have no cards. Close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. I'm going to second. I'll bring it back for discussion. Same, same. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Non quasi judicial ordinance 8 2020. Patty, would you re read the title, please? Ordinance 8 2020, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, approving a text amendment to the city's comprehensive land use plan in the future land use element, transportation element, conservation element, and capital improvements element to provide internal consistency with the city's comprehensive plan, mobility plan, mobility fee, providing for transmittal to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity, DEO, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date for other purposes. Note to the public, there is a sign-in sheet at the front desk for anyone wanting additional information from the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. All right, I'm going to open the public hearing on this. Ordinance 8 and 9 will be a combined presentation, but voted on separately. A staff presentation. Um, Don, thank you. Okay, good evening, Mayor, City Council members. Dawn Sonneborn uh, with Planning and Zoning. Um, this is a combined um, presentation for Ordinance 8 and Ordinance 9. This is uh, for the Comprehensive Plan Amendment and LDR Amendments for Mobility Plan and Mobility Fee Consistency. Ordinance 8 is the city-initiated comp plan amendment for the text amendments for the future land use, transportation, conservation, and capital improvement elements. And then Ordinance 9 is also the city-initiated request to amend various sections of the LDRs, Chapter 78. Again, these are all for consistency with the city's mobility fee and mobility plan. We work very closely, all staff members work very closely with um, our consultants, Andrea Troutman with Pinder Troutman uh, Consulting, and then with Jonathan Paul with New Urban Concepts on these petitions. We work very hard, it's a lot of tedious work. Uh, just a little bit of background, we've been working on these types of um, initiatives since 2016 when we uh, updated our comprehensive plan and did amendments then to establish the process for, and the framework for the mobility plan and mobility fee. And then uh, Ordinance 16, 2019 was adoption of the city's mobility plan. That established mobility fee assessment area and the benefit area for all areas east of the Beeline Highway. And then the areas west of Beeline Highway, um, and it also included Alton, those fall under the traditional concurrency that is run through um, the county. Ordinance 19, uh, 2019 then amended the LDRs accordingly to incorporate the mobility fees. So the comprehensive plan amendments, and I do apologize, your packages were enormous, <laughs> but um, we amended the future land use, uh, the transportation, conservation, and capital improvement elements, and you can see some of the things here, but again, it all was related to just updating it to what the mobility fee and the mobility plan um, already had in place. And then the LDR amendments, that was, that was probably the, bu the bulk of, the, uh, of your package, uh, went through line by line with all of the um, transportation uh, related uh, goals, obje objectives and policies and uh, updated all of that. We have a new quality of service terminology now um, in, our, in our land development code. 
And I want to point out with the mobility plan, uh, the blue area that you see here is the mobility fee assessment area, but it also includes Alton because Alton has an existing um, proportionate fair share. So that will continue under the traditional concurrency with that. And then the areas in pink um, is the road impact fee assessment areas. Um, and again, that includes Alton, and that's under the traditional concurrency methods um, that we have had all along. This has been noticed, both of them, Ordinance 8 and Ordinance 9 in the paper, according to code. Uh, we had some coordination and outreach for this process. We uh, issued the IPARC notice on June 1st. Uh, we also shared all of these amendments with our local traffic engineers who work closely with us with petitions that come in. And then we also presented it to the PGA Corridor Association. We did receive a Palm Beach County letter um, that was dated June 9th, um, that uh, it was a letter of objection. And then the IPARC notice of intent to object um, by the county was also filed. We received that June 22nd. And as you can see here in the yellow underline, the notice of intent from IPARC um, requested a meeting by staff to meet with Palm Beach County. That was conducted via conference call on um, July 10th. The Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board um, at their June 9th meeting uh, recommended approval uh, by a vote of 7 to 0. And staff recommends approval of Ordinance 8 and Ordinance 9 2019 as presented on first reading. Thank you. Sorry. I do have one comment card on this, and there's no way I'm going to pronounce your name. I want to say Kershid. Well, Is that okay? Could it be better? How do we do the? How do we do your last? Mahajudin. That's what I would have said. Just as it is written. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can uh, you state your name and address for the record, please? Kershid Mahajudin, 720 South Sapodilla Avenue, West Palm Beach. I'm representing Palm Beach County Planning Division. I submitted in the record a PowerPoint presentation. If you can receive and file, um, the county has. As, uh, as you heard, uh, submitted a letter of objection um, for both items regarding the comprehensive plan amendments and the LDR regulations in front of you today. Uh, to us, it is yet another illegal attempt to repeal county's transportation concurrency and road impact fee. County's objection is based upon the fact that a municipality cannot unilaterally repeal these laws pursuant to county's charter. Please be clear that we are okay if you, uh, uh, you implement these in addition to Palm Beach County's impact fee and uh, traffic performance standards. Uh, a brief history, uh, if you want to flip through your PowerPoints really quick. County adopted Pump Plan uh, and Thoroughfare Identification Map TIM in 1980. In 1988, uh, voters approved uh, road impact fee through charter amendment. Um, and in 1990, county adopted the traffic performance standard uh, for only for the state and county roads. County uses the TIM map as a base for road and intersection improvements. And uh, we spent about $1 billion from 93 to, let's say, 2019 on roadway and intersection improvements. And we also spend about uh, upwards of 150 million a year on a comprehensive transit system and only countywide transit system in this county. Together, our transportation network provides a important uh, uh, lifeline for economic vitality of the city by providing access to and from the city for about 89% uh, of the jobs while only about 11% of the residents live and work within the city. County's network also includes, um, uh, in conclusion, county strongly objects to these amendments and we request that you deny these amendments. We, uh, uh, we intend to continue through IPARC objection process and whatever uh, abilities we have, we'll continue on that. But hopefully it won't get there. Thank you. Understood, thank you, sir. I'm going to close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve, please? Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Rochelle has a second. Bring it back for discussion. 
Do we have any discussion on this, guys? We kind of live and breathe this. There's no discussion between us. Any questions for staff? We've been discussing this for a while. Yeah. Rochelle, are you good, Mark? Um, I, I had a number of questions, but I did ask staff. Just it was a lot of it was clarification on some of the um, some of the definitions of some of the uh, the designations for assigning roads, um, et cetera. So, uh, you know, as a city, we we decided we wanted to move forward with the mobility plan, plan and mobility fee. This is basically cleaning up the language in our comprehensive plan, which has to happen in order for us to implement that mobility plan and mobility fee. Uh, obviously, I'm very comfortable with our city's position and, uh, and uh, feel this is the right thing for our city and for our region. So uh, I want to thank the staff for all the time that they spent um, putting all this together. I also want to thank them for helping me fall asleep a couple times reading all of it. Uh, <laughs> but it was, it was uh, a very educational for me, but I think it was very complete. And, um, and as a result, I'm 100% supportive. Understood. Rochelle? No, I, I agree with Mark. I've been uh, looking at other cities across the country that have been doing similar things. And it's amazing how a few words can, uh, can, can bring us almost out of the dark ages into the future. And, and that's what these changes do uh, for the city of Palm Beach Gardens. Um, Again, it's it's a it's visionary. It's thinking ahead, and I'm I'm fine with it. Chelsea, a big fan of mobility. I right. voted yes on this, and I was on zoning. I'm proud to be here now to see it through, and I will see this through. Maria, well, I'm not going to put my transportation hat on for the moment. No, but, it's not. Um, I just think this is a you know like everything else. We have we have glitch lists that we constantly are updating to make sure we're in accord and in and in compliance and this is just another one of those lists so thank you for it's a lot of work and i can't wait to hear patty read the next title so. <laughs> yeah. hearing no further discussion can i get a vote please all in favor aye aye any aye. opposed aye motion carries five zero ordinance 9 2020 patty would you please read the title <laughs> i'm gonna order a pizza i'll be back in a half hour send in the dancing girls <laughs> It's 9-2020, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, amending Chapter 78 Land Development Regulations at Section 78-44, Concurrent Processing, by adopting new subsection B1D, further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-46, Application Procedures, by repealing subsection D1F and E4A, and readopting same as revised, and by amending subsections E7 and E7F, further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-52, conditional uses, by repealing subsections D4A and D4C, and readopting same as revised, further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-61 effective period of development orders and enforcement of conditions by repealing subsections C3, C4, C5, D, G, 2A, G2B, G2C, and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-75, adopted levels of service by repealing subsections A and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-80, Required Application Material, by repealing subsections A, A3A, and A10, and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-86, Proportionate Fair Share Program, by repealing the title and readopting same as revised by repealing subsections A, B, and C, and readopting same as revised, by repealing Five. subsections C1, C2, C3, C4, and subsections D through I in their entirety, further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-159, permitted uses, minor and major conditional uses, and prohibited uses, by repealing subsection F, 
and subsection J at notes 44.1F, 44.2F, 49A, 57G6, and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Article 5, Supplementary District Regulations at Division 11, Traffic Performance Standards, by repealing the title and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-611, Intent, by repealing Section 78-611 and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-612, Applicability, by repealing Subsection A and readopting same as revised. By repealing Subsections B1, B2, B3, and readopting same as revised. By repealing subsection B4 in its entirety, by repealing subsections C1, C2, and C3, and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78 621 established. By repealing subsections A and B and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-622, Level of Service Standards, by repealing Table 44 with notes and readopting same as revised, by adopting new Table 44A with note, further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-623, Link Standard, by repealing subsections A and B and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-624, Intersection Standard, by repealing subsections A and B and readopting same as revised, by repealing subsection C in its entirety. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-625, Radius of Development Influence, by repealing Section 78-625 and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-626, Phasing, by repealing Section 78-626 and readopting same as revised. By repealing subsection C, D, and E and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-627, Reliance on Committed Roadway Improvements by repealing the title and readopting same as revised. By repealing subsections A, B, B1, and B2 and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Subdivision 3, Traffic Impact Studies by repealing the title and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-641, Submission Required for Development Approval, by repealing Section 78-641 and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-642, Scope, by repealing Section 78-642 and readopting same as revised, by repealing subsections A, B, and C, and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-643, Methodology, by repealing subsections A, B, D, E, F, F2, G1, H1, H2, J1, J2, J3, K, L, L2 and M and readopting same as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-644, Site-Related Improvements, by repealing Section 78-644 and readopting same with a new title and as revised. Further amending Chapter 78 at Section 78-751, Definitions by repealing the definitions for average annual daily traffic, 
committed roadway improvements, concurrency, existing peak hour traffic, existing traffic, historical traffic growth table, performance surety, radius of development influence, road agreement, and total traffic, and readopting same as revised. By repealing the definitions for major project, major project map, and off-peak season in their entirety, and by adopting new definitions for multimodal, quality of service standard, and peak hour directional traffic volume, provided that each and every other section and subsection of Chapter 78 land development shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date and further purposes. Oh, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. Okay, so we're gonna open the hearing. Ordinance 9 has already been presented. Um, Kershed, do we put you on the record for saying, repeating what you said? Would you like us to would you like to read your comments into Ordinance 9? Would you like 9? to read the comments into this as well? Uh, no, but same comments. Same comments. Same comments. Okay, for the Are record, we, we'll incorporate the comment, your comments into Ordinance 9 yes, as please. well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Kershed. All right, so then we're gonna close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 9. Thank you, Mark. I'll second. Maria's got the second. Bring it back for discussion. Any discussion? I think the reading was long enough. Right on. N hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Resolution 40 2020. Patty, would you please read the title? Resolution 40 2020, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, approving a master signage program for the Avenir Plan Community Development PCD that includes design criteria for residential pod entry signs, non residential ground signs, and other various community signs. The Avenir PCD is generally located on the north side of North Lake Boulevard, east of Grapeview Boulevard, west of Bay Hill Drive, and south of Beeline Highway, as more particularly described herein, providing conditions of approval, providing an effective date for the purpose. Mr. Mayor. Hello. Oh, hold on. Yes, sir. We hear you. <laughs> I'm going to open the hearing and declare any ex partes. I have none. 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 Mark, Rochelle, we can't see you because the presentation is on the screen. I have no ex partes other than just driving through the community. Right on. Rochelle? Rochelle, she gone? Eric? I have none. Yeah, I was muted. Sorry, I thought, didn't think I was. Yeah, no ex partes. There you go. Who's that? Hi, Ken. <laughs> Hello, Mayor Woods. Uh, How are good you? evening. Big uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. All right, so we got a petitioner presentation since we have no ex partes. Ken, can you give us your abbreviated version on this, please? Have you yep. been sworn in? Uh, Mr. Mayor, hopefully you can hear me okay. This is Ken Tuma. Ken, we need to know if you've been sworn in. Name and record for the title. Uh, yes, sir. I have been sworn in. Uh, my name is Ken Tuma. My address is 610 Clamata Street, West Palm Beach. I have been sworn in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, with Go your ahead. permission, I'll begin. Please. Thank you. So good evening. Uh, Ken Tuma here again on behalf of Avenir. What is in front of you this evening is a master signage program. I have about five or six slides that go through the master signage program for the site. The purpose and intent of this um, application is to allow for consistency throughout Avenir. As you know, this project will continue on for the next 20 to 30 years. And the goal of the development team is to make sure that there's some consistency in all of the main features from a signage standpoint but also to allow for a lot of creativity. So basically the package as you'll see going through it is requiring certain elements, establishing height and width restrictions, but also allowing the individual home builders who will come before you or other uses, potentially 
potentially even in the future, property owner associations uh, to allow for flexibility. So they have the ability to change, but there are some, some guidelines to move forward through the project. I know all of you are familiar with Avenir. If you haven't been out there in a while, it's worth going out again and taking a look at. A lot is changing every day on the project. Uh, the main entry features are about 99% complete, and there's a significant amount of construction continuing on, including the beginning of the clubhouse that started uh, in the middle of the site. So the signage program itself, it's broken up into four or five sections. There are the PCD entry features, the PCD wayfinding features, the residential pod entry features. There are also non-residential pod features, um, recreation uses and ground signs and street naming signs, and then also traffic control or the regulatory signage. We are required as part of the initial development order to come before you for this package. The entry features. Uh, you have already approved one of the entry features located here at Avenir Drive and North Lake Boulevard. The balance of the project of the entry features um, will be consistent with that initial entry. There'll be a requirement to have oolite stone. There'll be a requirement to have the maximum height of 38 feet, which is consistent with the entry feature that's there today. There'll also be the approval will be required to be in front of you again as a site plan approval. For, so for tonight, all you're doing is saying, hey, these are the guardrails for these entry features, but we'll be required to come before you as they move through the process. This is just a quick view of the existing entry feature. You can see the construction and the quality that's being built, including the Oolite, which is gonna be a consistent design theme throughout all the Avenue. You'll hear me mention the word Oolite. It is a Florida natural stone that is gonna be the, the, the main thing for Avenir. Um, PCD wayfinding signs. Avenir is a big project. It had the roadways in Avenir, if you, drive, if you go down Avenir Drive to Coconuts, almost two miles long. So throughout the community, we have strategically placed working with your staff or will strategically place working with staff wayfinding signs. And the wayfinding signs are uh, six feet high, four feet wide, and they'll identify critical points, mostly at intersections within the road right of ways and the median. Find where you turn and how you go to different areas. So for example, on the screen in front of you to the right will be the city park and the town center. And the idea is to create, to create a sense of arrival so you know when to turn. Those signs will be made out of aluminum. They'll be built in the avenue of blue You'll note the detail, the landscaping in the front of them, and then also in the rear. And then of course the Avenir identifier. These are the Sorry. only, oops. These will be the only signs that you'll see tonight that are specifically designed as part of this approval. All the other ones are, are, um, are more uh, constraint oriented. The residential entry features, you have already approved three of these entry features through the project. Uh, and this will put the guidelines in place for the rest of them. The key things of the entry features that will be required, will be requirement of a name, the use of oolite stone, they'll have to be consistent landscaping. There'll be a height limitation of 20 feet. It must be within the coastal color palette, coastal color palettes, including whites, yellow, blues, and grays. So this basically sets up the, the, the rules of the road for the future entry features. Non-residential entry features, primarily this will be the town center district. This is just a conceptual design. It doesn't necessarily mean the sign will look like this, but setting up the rules for those non-residential signs, we have the maximum width of 15 feet, the maximum height of 10 feet, have to have the parcel name, have to use the Avenir logo, must have some oolite stone, and the landscaping must be consistent with the balance of the project Again, coastal color palettes only. Um, cultural, institutional, and recreational uses are uh, ground signs. These are, for example, the Avenir Clubhouse. This is a sign that you actually already approved. Again, setting the standards, maximum width, maximum height, uh, the use of the signage, the parcel address, requirement of the oolite stone, consistent landscaping, and coastal palettes. 
street signs. The, the regulatory signs with an avenir will have a design element. The poles will be a square aluminum pole. And then there are blue blade signs, which will be made out of aluminum. Then you'll see the avenir detail on the signs. The idea of those signage is to reinforce a sense of place within the avenir community. And then finally, the very exciting regulatory signs. These signs will uh, have a very unique design. There'll be that square black pole that we discussed before, aluminum. And then each one of the signs will have a will have each one of the signs will have a backing panel all the way around with a small border. You can see the yield sign again, just to create a sense of arrival at Avenir. And the back of those signs will actually be black and full and enclosed throughout the sign. And in short, that is the master signage program for Avenir. We are not requesting any waivers. The planning and zoning board recommended approval. Your staff has worked with us diligently through this project and they are recommending approval. We look forward to your questions and approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, Brett, do we have any, do you have a presentation on this or are you, we're just? No, Mayor. Ken okay. covered it all. All right, so I'm going to close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve. I'll make the second. I'll bring it back for discussion. Anybody got any questions of Ken or anybody? It looks great. I mean, we're, we're, there's consistency, and that's what we need. And uh, I drove out there last week, and it's, no, it's looking great. I mean, sat, sat in one of the, under one of those Oolite stone towers there, and just looked at all the vegetation and it it really looks good. Yeah, I agree. Chelsea? Um, I just like how consistent it is, but still allows for flexibility for the future since this will be happening for decades after this moment. For sure. So and a lot can change in that time, so we do need to allow for that. But aside from that, the consistency, everything from having an Avenir blue Pantone, I didn't realize that, uh, very cool. <laughs> Rochelle, I cannot see you. No, I- Ken, can you stop the share? Problem. I, I agree that uh, it allows for uh, some individuality, and the Avenir Blue is a great color. That's my color this year, so love right it. On. Mark? I have no comments. It looks fine to me. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Hearing no further discussion, can I have a vote, please? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you, Ken. Resolution 44 2020. Patty, could you please read the title on that? Resolution 44 2020, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, approving a site plan amendment to approve an entry feature with guardhouse, architectural, floor plans, and elevations, typical lot landscaping, and a model home and sales center for Regency at Avenir, residential pod five, site plan number two within the Avenir Plan Community Development PCD that is generally located on the north side of North Lake Boulevard, east of Grapeview Boulevard, west of Bay Hill Drive, and south of Beeline Highway, as more particularly described herein, providing an effective date for the purposes. I'm gonna open the public hearing. Any ex partes on this? I have none. None. Nope. Nope. Do we have a petition or presentation? Good morning, Council. Or, Hi, Nicole. Good morning. We good see evening. you now. It's we got you now. Day. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, um, hey, Nicole, have you been sworn in? With Kotler and Herring, I have been sworn in. Thank you. Tonight, we are presenting to you Pod 5 Regency at Avenir. And um, the request is just a very simple request. You've already previously approved a Pod 5 site plan, but the request itself is just to um, look at the architecture for the community and to enhance the entry plan as well. We do have our project team viewing live, uh, but here online tonight you have myself and you have Fred Feister from Toll Brothers. Mm -hmm. Toll Brothers is our applicant. We have uh, two sets of architects for the design. The landscape architects and land planners are Kotler and Herring and also 
Grant Whelan Design Landscape Architecture, and we have Balbay and Associates as our civil engineer. And as I mentioned earlier, it's just a very simple request for enhanced entry feature for um, the entry to the community, including signage. We have 10 models with typical landscape and a model in sales center. I know that you're very familiar with the location of Avenir, so I'm actually gonna kind of flip ahead of that slide. The location of pod five within Avenir is highlighted on your screen. Pod five has 469 age restricted dwelling units. They are comprised of 50 foot lots and 60 foot lots. The entry itself was uh, completely redesigned and upgraded from the original approval by uh, the landscape architects at Crant Whelan's office. They really took a, an intentional approach with the hardscape design, the landscape design, and the architects came in and completely uh, designed a um, very intentional um, guardhouse. <clears throat> the hardscape uh, includes the high quality pavers that you see in this rendering. We also included signage and fountains. There are multiple basins within these fountain graphics of water with stacked stone, travertine cladding, and uu light stone features. As Ken mentioned in the previous presentation, uu light is a Florida natural stone and it's very prominent within the Avenir uh, community. And we've also incorporated that within our entry features. The entry landscape uh, is, uh, it includes very grand entry with the date palms towards the front. When you drive in, you've got the date palms in the middle, you've got the date palms on the sides. Off to the sides as well, you have the Montgomery Palm bosques. And then closer to the edges, to the screening of the residents on both sides, you do have very full live oak trees and sable palms. Taking a look at the materials of the guardhouse, it was designed by Randall Stock's office. It features the Florida Ulu light stone, as you can see within the main material. It also includes painted wood beams, brackets, and stucco siding panels. Now, the community itself, as I mentioned, was broken up into the 50 foot and 60 foot lots. And what Toll Brothers has done is they've broken them into two different collections that pertain to each of the size lots. You have the Palm Collection and the Tradewinds Collection. Within both of those collections, uh, potential home buyers will have the option to choose five different models within each of those collections. And within each of those, they have four different elevation styles, Boca Raton, Transitional, Coastal, and Contemporary. So that's 10 model homes with four different elevations, 40 different possible elevations, 20 per collection. One of the really important things that we've taken a look here and we've done with other communities uh, especially with an avenue is to look at the diversity. We wanna make sure that the product that we're providing within the community uh, is diverse and provides some great architectural um, massing and interest. So we were able to work with staff to provide architectural interest in upgraded elevations, not only on the side elevations that um, sit directly next to open space parcels in public uh, and some of the, the right of way streets within the community, but also to the rear as well. You have some of these lakefront lots and all of these have upgraded rear architecture. So we, we paid special attention to that with the architectural details. We've counted 315 lots out of the 469 and that's 67% of the lots within the community that have some sort of upgraded elevation, whether it's a side elevation, a rear elevation, and some of them even have both. And we're gonna take a quick look at the model center that we have proposed for the community. It's gonna be located right here and I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see it a little bit better. I just wanted to give you um, an opportunity to see where it sat on the property. Home buyers that are gonna come into the community are gonna go through the main entrance and then they're gonna go uh, immediate to the right and uh, park in the temporary parking area. The nice thing about this design is that the, the vehicles that come in will turn around and go directly back out. So there's no vehicle circulation throughout the community, which may uh, conflict with any of the construction that's going on. In the blue, I've notated the pedestrian circulation. 
once a buyer comes into the community and they park, they're able to just circle around the model home area. It's completely tracked in with fencing. So again, it, it, it helps direct the buyer uh, from home to home and they can see all of them. Within these different collections, we came up with a couple of 3D renderings just to give you a, an idea of the style, the material, the colors. So I'm gonna show you two slides. This is a representation of the Palm Collection. And as you remember, it's the 50 foot lots. Um, those homes range from uh, just under 1,900 square feet to just over 2,400 square feet under air. And these are some of the different style representations and they completely and accurately represent the typical lot landscaping the materials, the colors, and the differences between the homes. The Trade Winds collection, again, to give you an idea uh, of what the different homes are that we are looking at. As you can see, some of them are front-loaded garages on the larger 60-foot lots, and three of the models actually do have a side-load garage on the 60-foot models as well. These homes range from uh, just over 2,500 square feet to just over 2,800 square feet. And to wrap everything up, we did design typical lot landscaping for each of the models. Don Herring hand designed every single one of these. There's one for every model and it includes uh, enhanced uh, landscape architecture and enhanced elevations as well. We were able to work with staff and planning and zoning board to uh, make sure to meet all the requirements and make sure that it was appropriately designed for the needs of the community and we feel very confident with the designs that we came up with for each of these uh, thank you so much for your time and as i mentioned both myself and fred are here on the line so if you have any questions we're happy to answer them thank you um do we have a staff presentation on this joanne no presentation. Nicole covered it for petitions. Are you okay. I have no cards on this. So I'm going to close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second for approval, please? I'll make a motion. We approve resolution 44. I'm just listening for a name. I'll second that motion. Chelsea's second. Bring it back for discussion. Any thoughts? Anything on this, guys? We kind of live this stuff a little bit. I like the transitional style myself. I like that, too. I like the coastal. I, I don't know, you guys. And that's why there's more than one style, right? Chelsea's I'm motion in the coastal. I'm with Chelsea on that one. Michelle. Mark, what do you like? <laughs> um, I like all of them. We all um, like the ooh, I, like I did have a question, though. I mean, it looks great, and it, it fits the, uh, the, the, the character of, of um, Avenir as a whole. Toll Brothers, uh, you guys always have nice products that, um, you know, that's gonna make the area look what it's supposed to look like. So thanks for that. Two questions real quick, and I don't know if you have answers for them. What are the proposed home prices and any HOA fees? I know there's a, a gated, there's a clubhouse within this community uh, that's specific for this, this, um, this, this uh, pod. Uh, do you know uh, an estimate what the HOA fees are gonna be and what the uh, home prices may be starting at? Right, yes, um, the home prices right now are uh, starting at the low 500s through the mid 650s. And Fred, I know you're on the line. Do you have an idea on the homeowner's question? Fred's on mute. Okay. Yeah, hi, good evening. Fred Fister, Toll Brothers, um, 951 Broken Sound Boulevard. I have been sworn in. Um, yeah, the, so the estimated HOA fee within A5 for the active adult that's going to have its own clubhouse is about $350 per month just for uh, the HOA fee. And that would be maintenance and, and all the works that goes with it. That's correct. Okay. And will these, will these folks have access to the main clubhouse in Avenir as well, or are they restricted to just this one? Not that they're going to want to go over there, but in case they wanted to. So it, it's designed to have its own separate amenity. Uh, current design, which will be before you here shortly, it's still going through PNZ process, is approximately 24,000 square feet. Uh, so it's very substantial. They will have all the creature comforts that they desire within the community itself. And will each home have the option to put a pool in the back or are, they, are the yards gonna be available to do that? Okay. Yes, they will. Thank you.
to yeah and we've designed each of the Thank landscape you. for the typical lots for optional pools as well all right i think that's going to be it thank you nicole thank you fred um uh, i've got one question. oh i'm sorry rochelle um being that avenir is a golf community and we've got all these lovely golf car paths going everywhere the garage looked like it was a typical two-car garage is there accommodation for golf cart parking in the garage that's a great question rochelle there are uh i counted there are four four of the models two within the 60 foot lots and two within the 50 foot lots that have garages with almost like a a faux tandem type space where it's not enough space to put a car, but there's probably enough space to put a golf cart. So that could be accommodated. And also with the clubhouse design that Fred and I are working on, uh, there's gonna be, we're, we're looking to put in golf cart parking to try to stay consistent with that theme. Thank you. All right, so I've closed the hearing. We have a motion in this uh, second and I hear no further discussion. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. We're all Have a good. good evening. Thanks, Fred. All right, Resolution 30, 2020. Patty, would you please read the title? Resolution 30, 2020, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, adopting a proposed maximum millage rate for the City of Palm Beach Gardens for fiscal year 2020-2021, setting the date, time, and place of the first budget hearing, providing an effective date for other purposes. Alan, thank okay. you. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I do have a very brief presentation. I am Zoom challenged, so I'm looking to Eric right now <laughs> to we help all? me. That's why you're okay. here. <laughs> there we go. Resolution 30, Eric? Oh, I got it, okay. I have extra chair for you. Oh, okay. Luckily, it's a very short presentation. Okay. Because I got over and under, under with the chief, 9 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't think we're going to make the car. I know. Okay. I did the over. Oh, okay. Well, you won then. <gasps> All right. Okay. All right. So how do I kick it in gear, Eric? Where's my... Here, I'll get it out. Okay. Oh, here we go. I see it. Never mind. You got it? You got it. <clears throat> okay. Again, as I said, very brief presentation. Again, Alan Owens with the Finance Department. Uh, the purpose of Resolution 30 is, is very short. It's just twofold. Basically, this is the first step uh, in the process of uh, adopting each year's annual budget. Uh, the first part is to set the maximum millage rate uh, going into the budget hearings and also to set the date and time of the first public hearing. Um, and basically, staff is proposing that we keep the millage rate, rate at the same 5.55. Again, there's no debt service millage, and it is the same millage as this year. The rollback rate is calculates out at 5.4254. Um, again, what that rate, the rollback rate is, that's the rate that would generate the same revenue as last year's dollars with the exception of uh, dollars from new construction. And that rate is 2.3%. The 5.55 is 2.3% above the rollback rate. Again, those rates can be lowered during the public hearings, but not raised. Um, actually, it could be with a very difficult process uh, so pra practically speaking, they cannot be uh, raised during the pr uh, public hearing process. Um, the second part of this action requires the, us, the city, to notify the county of the date, time, and place of the first uh, public hearing. Those dates cannot conflict with dates that are held for the school board and the Palm Beach County budget hearings. And those dates in September are the 3rd, the 9th, and the 15th. So staff is recommending the first public hearing be held on September 10th, 2020. And so with that, staff is recommending approval of Resolution 30, 2020, which sets the maximum operating millage at 5.55 and setting the date and time for the first public hearing on September 10th at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers. One other quick note, tomorrow morning, we will be sending out a link to all, you all and the Budget Oversight Review Board with a link to the detail line item budget. Um, we just finished putting all the files into PDF format today, actually. So it's all ready to go. 
first thing in the morning that will go out and also be put on the website made available to the public at that time. So Perfect. with that, any, I'll entertain any questions. All right, so with that, uh, can I get a motion and second to approve? I'll make a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. I'll second. Rochelle's got the second. Um, bring it back for discussion. Out of respect for Chelsea, her first budget, it's difficult. You want to listen a little bit or you want to, you got I'll some? I'll listen first. I have some questions, so thank you. Start with you, Mark. Okay. Um, well, this is you know, just a formality, basically getting the maximum millage set. Correct. So uh, obviously supportive of that. Um, Alan, you and I had a short talk the other night or the other day during my agenda review about potential impacts on city business tax collections given the COVID era. Um, that doesn't impact this year's budget, but it would impact next year's budget. Do you have any comment or thought, um, any anticipation on anything? Not to go into great detail tonight. Again, as we mentioned in our brief talk, Mark, it, all of our discussion is, is contained in the transmittal memo that summarizes next year's budget. So uh, there is a section that talks about COVID and how we're uh, dealing with it. And uh, obviously we look forward to discussing uh, in detail at a later time with each of the council members uh, how we're addressing it. But I think it's pretty well laid out uh, in, in the budget transmittal memo, so. Okay, I'll wait for that, thank you. Rochelle? I had the same discussion with Alan and got the same answer at my agenda review, so I will wait for the memo. Right on. Maria? Uh, Alan, just for to remind people, what, what has been our actual millage rate over the last five years? Because I know we've been coming down every year for the last five. So just do you have that off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head. I know last year was the first year we reduced, we eliminated that, serv that service millage. We were at 5.6003, I think, and then we're down to 5.55, but it has been gradually coming down over the last several years, actually, to keep the operating rate flat and the debt millage came down. And I know because, you know, people look at their tax bills and they say, my taxes went up, but in, mm -hmm. in actuality, when they're looking at their tax bill, it's that the amount that they have to pay goes up because the value of their homes go up. It's not because the city of Palm Beach Gardens has raised the millage rate because we've actually lowered the millage rate actual, every year since I've been on council. So that's it's just a, a small reminder, a shout out to those that are listening that if, the, you're, if you are paying more in taxes, it is because the value of your home has gone up. That's and we're correct. thankful that what did the property appraiser send us 13 billion this year a little was over the, 13 uh, billion mm -hmm. yes so that's yeah. that's just a reminder to everyone listening right excellent comment as well maria uh chelsea you have anything to say no i've been actually listening to the budget review board when they've been meeting so i'm trying to catch up a little bit right. so that, um and you know we're lucky that we live in an area with that the taxable values are high so we're able to keep a lower millage rate which is something people need to understand so i'm glad maria mentioned what she did and I'm excited to, uh, to work on the budget soon. Right. Well, I know going forward, the way Alan presents the budget, it, it, you know, how convoluted and forensic it could be, but the way he presents it to us, it's, it's, um, it's seamless and it's an awesome presentation. And we have no idea what the COVID is going to do to our taxable value and our home values next year. So, um, you know, we've had this 10 year plan and it just, this is a perfect time to, the mm -hmm. steady as she goes and staying on course really will ref hopefully reflect in our, um, you know, in, in the money that we have next year because very likely our values of our homes are going to drop, which is also uh, obviously going to um, affect the city's mm -hmm. uh, gains. But I really have nothing. I'm anxious to see the, the mm -hmm. final presentation of the budget. Mm -hmm. You do an excellent job every year, and I appreciate your hard work. I appreciate you spending time with me. A little extra time at the agenda review no, no, um, no and I think I'm hearing no further discussion nope. so all in favor aye. aye any opposed motion carries 5-0 okay so we're not that's it right yeah we're not done because I said at the beginning for items for council action discussion I said I had two you know and I got we all got tied up in the naming the city complex after Ron um, I've had a many, many 
people in business and actually in the civ civil community contact me because they think seven o'clock is too late to have the meeting. And there's, a, there's just a gap in time between 5.30 and 7. The business people are waiting longer. Here, for perfect example, it's 9.10 now. Um, and I would like to bring it up for discussion. I had, I asked Ron and Max if we could pull the resolution slash ordinance. I think it's two, twofold. Um, if there's a way we can either repeal one of them or if we can change it, but I wanted to bring it up for vote and discussion here for business purposes. Can we move this stuff to six, y'all? I'm happy to chime in on that because ironically, after we had our special meeting and we started at six and we got out and it was still daylight, I turned to Ron and I said, Ron, we need to start our meetings at six o'clock. So Carl, this is a great idea and I am all in favor. And that, and just so you know, that the, the, the start time in the meetings was established by resolution. So that's not that that's a motion and a vote if you wish to change it. Okay, but the or, there's an ordinance that, that puts us till 11:30, right? Right. That was adopted by the council that established the, your high water as late as you would go. It called a deadline as a hard deadline for your meeting, and and we can bring that back and revisit that um, at, at another meeting if it's the desire of the council. Mark, can I have your thoughts on this? Because you're a business guy, you work in you, you know. Um, I don't have a, a real. I don't really have much of an opinion one way or the other. I mean, uh, starting earlier is fine. I mean, one of the thoughts we had earlier was trying to move some of the council discussion to the end of the meeting so the business community or those that are any of the applicants can get in and, and get out. But it still seems to take quite a while before we get our presentations done. Um, and and the, the presentations are important. I think it's important that the community knows what, what the city is doing, what the staff is doing. City manager reports always very important for the, for the residents to know, and you know what we're doing out there. I think is important as well, uh, but that just takes time. I mean, it takes at least an hour before we even get to the agenda. Right. Um, if we know we have a lot of, um, I mean, we can either set a policy and start every meeting at six, which I'm comfortable with, uh, you know, on the way home. But you know, you can stop in and and, and do the meeting. Um, we could also just, I don't know if it's wise to change it. I think you want to keep it the same consistently so I don't know if the city manager or attorney or anyone else has any thoughts on you know I, I would assume we'd want to keep it the same time every every month unless there's yeah, a special meeting but no that's what uh, the discussion is do you have a thought on that Ron Max I, I believe that that is the intent or the or the discussion is would be to change our formal meeting times to now move from 7 to 6 p.m. Uh, for the future have we had any comment from any of the business community, any of the applicants that come in? I mean, it's right in the middle of dinner time, so I'm not sure some people like to go home and, and grab a bite before they start the meeting. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing well, I want to. I just want to remind you, this is one day of the month. It's one day and one hour. And um, I think the business community would rather get home to their families a little bit earlier. And yes, I did have a call today, as a matter of fact, from one of our present, uh, presenters this evening who specifically asked that question to bring it up um, to bring it up in the future. And I felt there was no reason to, to bring it up later. Um, it's a simple resolution. It's easy to fix. We, at least three of us, need to agree that we can change a few minutes of our day one day a month. Because um, I find myself, you know, if I'm done by five, you know, it's basically two hours before, you know, when we can just flow right into a six o'clock meeting. So that's how I feel about it. So Chelsea, how do you feel about it? Um, well, being on zoning for a while, we met at six. So actually the first time I came here for, you know, my real job, uh, I thought it was at six. So consistency wise, that's when the other, other evening boards are meeting. I'm not sure of all of them, but that I know zoning started at six and I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Yeah, it says oh, well. Parks and Rec also at 6 p.m. Rochelle, thoughts? I have no problem changing it. There, there's excellent. No, no reason that I could give that would make a difference to me, really. So agreed. And again, it's one day a month for one hour. That's all we're 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 changing. And and really, I think it's an antiquated idea from I don't even know how many years ago to to let people go home and eat and do whatever they got to do. I mean, you know, there's there's people and if they want to go home and eat, they can flip up the screen and pull up the city council meeting too. And, um, Carl. The staff. I'm sorry. 
I was just going to ask that question. How is it for staff? Does Ron have feelings on on what staff? Uh, would it be a long day? We're getting day thumbs for up from the audience. We're getting thumbs up from... <laughs> Should we turn the screen around, Rochelle, so you can see if, everybody if with their thumbs may, up? If I may speak Everyone's for staff. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to make this a big deal, but if, Ron, if you have any yeah, input the, on this. Yeah, uh, the staff, you know, is they're new, normally their day ends around 5 o'clock. A lot of them stay a bit later, but um, they have, uh, you know, sort of like uh, continue to work or have dead time from 5 to 7. Uh, so it would, would give them an opportunity to get an earlier start and get home earlier, hopefully, uh, to their family. So I think staff could be supportive of that. Do I see any head nods or yeah, I got I think staff is good for that. Uh, I'll, you know, and it, it provides more consistency for staff just to shoot right on through. We're always prepared and you're always here early anyway. So we just might as well get started with the city's business. And that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to conduct our business. So. All right. So we're going to be more uh, productive for that downtime between five and seven. So do we really want to talk about it or we can just have uh, Max Drop resolution. We'll vote on it. You can make a motion and a vote. You can do it by motion I'll right now. I'll make a motion that we oh. change our meeting time to start at six o'clock. We'll second your motion. Okay, so Chelsea on a second, and then this is going to start August meeting, guys. I'll probably show up at six thirty. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start without you. <laughs> we'll start without me. Well, I'll just be on the phone. All right, so. Uh, hearing no further discussion on this particular topic, sorry I forgot about it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution caro carries. 6 p.m. it is. That's it, guys. Anything? Um, city, city attorney. Oh, city. Then we have a city um, attorney. I can very briefly. There's nothing really um, earth shattering going on right now. We have a. Um, we have three litigation matters right now. The uh, the most recent Sears lawsuit, as you know, we're uh, we're in discovery and we're we're dealing with that at the moment um, and we're engaging in various forms of motion practice as we move closer and closer to a trial. Um, the Rustic Lakes annexation challenge is still hanging out out there, um, uh, an aspect of it. it um, I still feel the same way about it as I, as I did before. I believe that it's basically frivolous and that nothing's going to come of it. It's just that because of COVID, the courts have slowed way, slowed way down and it requires a specially set hearing and um, we'll be moving forward here probably on it within the next 30 to 45 days. Um, and the, uh, the, the lawsuit that the uh, tax collector brought against us for her parcel over on PJ Boulevard um, we have to file our responsive pleading in that tomorrow, and we'll do so. That's it. All right, guys, I'm ready to adjourn. Wait, hold on a go second. Ahead, Mark. Before I'm you not, go, I'm not going to um, show anybody off. Resolution 42 that was in our consent today moved the September meetings. Does that have to edit? Do we, does it specify 7 o'clock p.m. in those resolutions, or does it matter that we just change everything else to 6? Good point. It's a resolution. Resolu an ordinance would 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 have two readings. Well, a resolution. Does. Right, but sorry, Max. It, no, it's okay. The no, resolution. No, it, I, that's a resolution like, forty-two and consent. It, it moved the September meetings. Did it, it? I don't have it online. Does it specify seven o'clock start? And if so, do we have to do anything to change that? To change it to six? Or? It, it does specify specify seven o'clock start. But the motion and the vote that you took this evening to change all your future meetings to six p.m. will override that. So it's just okay. another resolution and. A motion, all a resolution is is a written motion. So that's a very good question, and um, it, it's not an issue. The motion and, and the vote that you guys just took will supersede that. So those meetings, all future meetings, will begin at 6 p.m. And they will be advertised accordingly. And we'll complete the okay. circle. Thank you. But it's a good, very good question. Good question. All right, Long I'm not going to. Nice vacation. Yeah, Sir? enjoy. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ron's going to. Thank you. I'm going to be leaving in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you all, you all embarrass me enough here. Thank, We're not thank, thank you all very much. Uh, again, I'm sort of stuck for words. I'm, I'm very touched. Thank you. All right. I'm ready to adjourn, but I'm not going to shut because we got everybody on screen. Are you guys ready to go home? Yes, sir. Yeah. Rochelle, Mark, Mark, I know you're in Tampaville. Yeah. What you do. I'm heading downstairs to somewhere more fun than my room. I saw a red solo cup. I saw a red solo cup in there somewhere. Water. All right, everybody, meeting adjourned. <laughs>